Hi everybody. So <clears throat> I'm gonna make the video for Laser Picker 5 and I decide to split the video in two different parts. In this case it's gonna be one today for wood and what I found with wood and some other materials or more like about the blue light laser. So first of all I wanna say it's a smaller area that advertise it has some limitations on the curves that is understandable because the kind of lens that they are using um, and if you are aware of that and you can manage yourself with that uh, I'm gonna say that is perfectly fine now uh, I did the test with the infrared or the fiber the 20 watt fiber and I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to be doing some other comparisons and tests. Now, the blue light uh, behaves pretty much just like the ultra. There is no difference on how it behaves. I did notice, though, that it tends to be a little bit more powerful. And again, that's because the lens using on the ultra has more dispersion than the one using on the laser picker. With that being said, a smaller area like a regular fiber laser will give you a better concentration of power for your work. So let me show you first, this is on regular wood and you can see that this is pretty, pretty even. I mean, he, he did a great job on this. Now, one of the things I'm gonna say that X2 is years ahead is software. Both claim the work with Lightburn. Uh, both are really glitchy with Lightburn. I wouldn't recommend anyone buying any of these two machines thinking that they are going to use Lightburn. So if you are thinking on Lightburn, get a real, real fiber, like a real gobble fiber, a UV laser, or something like that. Don't get these guys because they don't really work. Uh, their software laser picker in my opinion, is on the very early stages. They need to improve that hundreds of times. They are way, way behind. It's usable, absolutely. It takes time to get used to. I never use it like I'm doing it right now. And I personally don't like it much, uh, but it has some things that are kind of cool to use here and there. Um, the speed, because how the software works uh, on a vector file, this this was an engraved on a vector file. Uh, it's interesting because the laser start and go with one of the elements. It start, finish the element, it stops, and it start a second job for the second element. So each element on a vector will be a job. So the laser starts and stops, it starts and it stops. And how I know it's starting and stopping because the fan doesn't even have time in some cases to build up enough speed, which I don't know why. Uh, so that's something that software engineers need to fix because you can cut the time actually in half Yes, the laser speed is 10,000 millimeters per second, but you add, uh, take that 2,000 out, if you are doing a 10,000, take 2,000 out of that, because you're waiting between sections of your work. So this was on cork. Um, again, super even, you know, really easy to use on cork. I have no problems whatsoever with the cork. Uh, I did this on bamboo uh, and you can see it, it came out actually, I was really surprised about this one because I did have a couple problems on the ultra with the bamboo. Uh, in some parts on the ultra, the bamboo come not as clean as this, but that might be because the lens and, and this is uh, fairly, fairly deep. So it came out really, really, really well. So engraving wise right now with the blue light laser, uh, it's been superb. I've been doing a bunch of different stuff, testing it and, and marking everything I can 
possibly think of on the 20 watt blue light and it's working right the software is something that is lacking tremendously is it is it's crippling the machine in my opinion uh and if you think that well it doesn't matter i'll go and work on liburn it's even worse liburn didn't work at all let me show you a slate and this is something that was cool with this specific slate so i didn't did any kind of a carving uh, you will see some kind of a, a little bit of depth in there but look at this part so this part the slate has like a big dent or a chip and because the lens has so much power even though this is i want to say almost three millimeters down this chip or two millimeters down and it's still engraved down there so he gave me the option to do this like all the way around to the edges and if there were any kind of imperfection like that one here's another one it will just engrave and it's still that sharp it's like nice it's not all faded or nothing like that so it works pretty well so what i will do differently on this machine uh personally so far if you are looking for something that has a lot of power to do a small work like four and a half by four and a half inches and just remember it's not on a square the corners are rounded uh this is definitely oh. better personally better so far than the ultra on power software wise though you're gonna struggle you're gonna really 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 struggle so you better learn how to use something else uh and bring the graphic basically ready to just select the power the pattern the uh the speed and whatever you need and send your job so let me show you the, my setup here really quick so you can have a better idea what I'm being working with. So what I have here is of course a jig holder for all my jigs. So I can use it, I could attack, so it's just like another thing. So this allows me to put all the four inches one after the other and do the engraving super quick, super fast, always in the same spot. It was super simple to do. Now this doesn't have a case and enclosure so i have this and i remove it because i actually broke it i clean it and i cut the leg but this has a bracket that i hold it and i put in the fan here just like i do with my fiber and this is currently going to the hose that goes connected to the filter box let me tell you one thing filter box pull every little bit of smoke or particle that I have and again I'm working on carpet and that did a trick how I protect myself so I have my glasses here I just put my glasses when I was working I close the door and I put when I pull the door close I hang on the hang on the knob a pair of glasses in case uh, my girlfriend wants to come in test and then I have this other shield when I was doing something simple I was just putting the shield here like so so the laser was behind that shield just to protect of course I move this out so I don't have you know reflections anyway so the laser itself is very good it works as advertised so far you know is giving me a really good quality but uh, the software needs a lot of improvement now the price definitely is a lot cheaper than F1 Ultra there's a bunch of things that you don't have with this machine than you have with the Ultra like the full enclosure and those are add-ons and all those things adds to the price so this is a $2,800 uh, 20 watt fiber laser 20 watt blue light laser and it really is a great machine so far i mean uh for small things they they really have the good idea of using the proper lens for the power that they are trying to deliver so at 20 watt you are getting the whole 20 watt on your material and you are getting really good quality now if you are doing something like 
you know, uh, Monarch Pie. Monarch Pie have an amazing collection of jewelry and metal uh, items for you to sell. Like, you want to make, let's say, on metal pie, uh, Monarch Pine. I don't have it here. I was looking for it, but I don't have it here. This is some secret message letter. So you have a little letter here and go to envelope thing here and all that. So those are stainless steel. So just thinking on a fiber laser, how I work on a real fiber laser, no, these dual lasers. Uh, usually when I'm going to do small things, nothing major, nothing big, I go with a 65, uh, I, I believe 67 millimeters or the 100 millimeters lens. That means that my, my area is 100 by 100. It's in a square. So this is 100 by 100 and I made only four. The F1 Ultra is 200 by 200. So I get it. It's, it's great to have a huge jig on your machine. But there, there, there is something that is hilarious that, that I don't understand how people don't see it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this as a graphic. If your laser starts here and here, this distance is shorter than this distance. So you're going in a diagonal to the 200 here. You're having a lot of dispersion of light going out. And at the end of the day, the, the quality of your engraving is not the best. Also, you will need to slow down your engraving. So that's one of the reasons I don't do jigs that cover the entire area. Not because I think it's too big. No, I mean, it's fine. But I don't think the power of the laser is enough to cover it properly. Unless they fix on the software someone that says that when it's in this position, the laser head is there because it's an automatic lift. So this can be focused up and down via software. So if you're doing that and you have your laser, again, let's put it like this in the same way. You have your laser here and it's pointing something in this area. Maybe the laser head needs to be just there. But in the moment you start focusing down this area, your laser head should go down or do something, unless you put something to compensate for this power loss. Because I don't believe they are doing the right thing, having the biggest possible area with a smaller uh, power source. So you have, for example, a 30 watt, Fiber instead the 20 the 200 is kind of in the limit of what I will use and if you ask any person on the fiber industry the manufacturer and sell the, the fiber license like Hotian mm -hmm. laser the one I use personally when they sell you the machine they ask you what lenses you want and they also tell you we don't recommend anything bigger than this or bigger than that depending on the power of your laser and I have a 50 watt in, on the fiber and the maximum lens that they recommend me was for a 200 by 200. So if that was the maximum with a twin, with a 50 watt JPT, which is the same source of the X2, let's say laser pegging has the same source, it's a 20 watt, why X2 is using 200? So it's already running that laser thin. So. As much as people think that Laser Pecker is a baby company compared to Excel, maybe yes, at least via software. But like I said in, uh, a little bit ago, I believe they're doing the right thing with the distance and the size of the working area. So far, even though it's the blue light my testing so far and getting used to it, this looks amazing. I don't know, this looks like print. And I got to tell you, for the cost, I get a good extraction fan, put a hose like I do on my <laughs> fiber laser, and I roll with this. So I'm going to be checking more stuff. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video just on how it works and different things. And then I'm going to do uh, one more video after I learn a little bit more on the software when I'm going to be running both lasers at the same time to compare speeds.
So we're going to have a timer. We're going to have the ultra running a business card and then laser picker running the business card to see how they perform. And with the same settings, same quality, same everything, we're going to find who did better. So I hope you guys uh, like this video. I hope you guys kind of uh, see where I was going with this and try to explain how this is working. I believe laser picker is doing the right thing, but I also believe they are years behind on software. So be aware of that. I'm not affiliated with laser picker. I love X2 products. I use X2 products all the time. Uh, but I was really surprised about the quality that this machine is delivering. So I hope you guys like it. Leave your comments below. Ask whatever you need to know before you buy any laser. Doesn't matter what laser you want to buy. Just ask, ask the right questions. Uh, and think that every laser is an investment. You, you want to make money with that. And don't, don't get a big, heavy, super expensive paperweight. So... As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like, please subscribe, like, ring the bell for updates. And as usual, fire the laser.